Hello, I'm Roy Hill with Brownells. We're here at a Facebook Live event in the Brownells studios in Iowa. We, today on set we have Ben, who's with Hyperfire. Ben's the product manager. Hello, Ben. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for coming to be with us today. Of and Ben's going to be telling us about the various Hyperfire products. Uh, we've got some really cool triggers here for the AR-15 platform. We've got some compensators and some uh, nifty grips. But before we get into the, the specifics, could you maybe tell us how did Hyperfire get started? Of course. Uh, Terry Bender is our founder and CEO. Um, Terry has been a mechanical engineer his entire life, uh, entire working life. And um, he wanted, he had, back in 2011, he had an idea for designing a man portable 50 caliber mm -hmm. that was point target effective out to a mile and a half. Wow. Man portable. Uh, AR-15 style rifle. So, so is that in 50 BMG or? Yes, 50 BMG. Okay. So yep. an AR style rifle in 50 BMG, one man can carry it. Yes. Okay. And from there, uh, essentially he was developing the system um, and he moved on to talking to investors. And one of the investors finally pulled him to the side and said, can you, you know, this is a great idea. Can you uh, downgrade some of this for the AR-15 or can you uh, bring it down to that smaller platform? And he mm -hmm. said, of course I can. Mm -hmm. So um, from there, Hyperfire was birthed. Uh, he had our first trigger and he actually started selling triggers in 2013. In 2013. So y'all have some very interesting, innovative looking triggers, and but, but folks may not be that familiar with Hyperfire just because you've only been around for not quite five years. Yes. Right. So we've got some really cool triggers. Uh, what would you say are, are some of the key features that make your triggers different from other triggers that people might be more familiar with? Yeah, uh, about most other triggers on the market, or any mil spec style trigger, mm -hmm. you have to modify a hammer spring or sear geometry to get a lighter, smoother trigger pull. Mm -hmm. And everything that Hyperfire does has a purpose, has a specific problem that it fixes, and that was a problem for us because modifying a sear surface can be unsafe, and modifying a hammer spring is unreliable. Right. Light primer right. strikes. Mm -hmm. So what Terry did was he designed our cam over toggle engine, and that's what we're really known for in our HyperTouch series triggers. Right, and that's specifically in the HyperTouch, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one. Which, which tr specific trigger am I holding here? So this is the HyperTouch Genesis. This mm -hmm. is the very first trigger that Terry designed for the HyperTouch series. Mm -hmm. um, so this one's gonna have a little bit longer uh, pre-travel, a little bit shorter reset, but it is the first one to introduce the cam over toggle engine. And, and I'm gonna go ahead and dry fire this, and I'm gonna turn it this way, uh, so the folks viewing at home, and again, we are live on Facebook, so if you have questions, please just enter them as comments below the video feed. But I don't know if you can see this, but we've got a th pair of springs, and they are kind of dyed a little bit green yes. here, so they should be easy to see. But you've got this, as you said, the uh, the cam. Cam over toggle cam engine. Cam over toggle engine, and you've got a pair of springs. What's up yes. with the pair of springs pushing against the hammer? Here? So what this pair of springs does is it acts sort of like a compound bow. When the hammer is in its reset position. So when it pushes back like this, well, that's pretty hard to push. Yeah. So that's actually adding force downwards on the hammer, which is relieving sear pressure. So it's giving you that light, crisp, clean trigger pull mm -hmm. that everybody's looking for. But and as it you is a very trigger, light, crisp trigger pull, right. <laughs> but it takes quite a bit of force compared to a, a standard trigger setup with those two springs to get that hammer to come back. So, so keep going. It does because uh -huh. as that system cams over, it takes that same spring pressure that's relieving sear pressure and mm -hmm. adds it going forward to the hammer to deliver 35% more kinetic energy than even a mil spec trigger. So on the HyperTouch series, and you can identify those, they both have the, the, the cam over toggle, am engine. I saying that correctly? Yes, cam, cam over toggle. toggle engine with a pair of springs, and those two springs really push on that hammer very hard, so that really smacks forward, as you said, 35% more energy. And, and what is the major benefit of that? Reliability. So when you're getting to your um, high-end competition, extremely light triggers, mm -hmm. you're, like we said, reducing reliability. So right. when you're out shooting a competition, that's the last one of the last places that you need to have light strikes, misfires. Uh, things of that nature. So this completely eliminates that. It is a complete oxymoron in the AR-15 is that we are creating a light, light trigger, trigger pull, heavier hammer energy. Extra we're the only ones who can do that. Right, right, right. And also I want to point out that, that this entire fixture, in this case this one's red, uh, this is one of your products you call it the Hyper Train. Yes. Right? And this is kind of a dual purpose uh, and I'll, I'll confess as we were getting ready for the Facebook <laughs> Live I've spent several minutes here you know, playing with these, yep. they're just fun to play with. Uh, but, but tell us about the Hyper Train. 
Uh, so the Hypertrain is um, a platform that gunsmiths or home builders can use to not only practice mm -hmm. your dry firing techniques, mm -hmm. you can get really good with that trigger squeeze, right. um, but it's also a fixture. So if you're having issues with a trigger in your rifle, you can then put it into a Hypertrain that's designed with very tight tolerances. Right, right. And really get a chance to see everything from different angles and find out what may potentially be going wrong. And there's, the there's even a spot, just like a, a regular AR-15 low yes. receiver, you can install your safety selector right there and just try all the components. Okay, so uh, the specific trigger I have here in this red hyper train, which one is this one again? The this Genesis. Is Genesis. It's called the Genesis, obviously, because it's the first one. The very first one. Right, the very first one, and from 2012, right? 2013, 2013 was when they were first being sold. Right. And again, if, if you're watching on, on Facebook Live, and again, please ask us questions. We've, we've got uh, Ben here. He's the product manager. Who better to ask questions about Hyperfire <laughs> products than the product manager? Uh, it has a very light trigger pull and extra heavy strike by the hammer. So you've got different versions of the, these are all called the Hyper Touch. The Hyper Touch okay. series. The Hyper Touch series. So for example, we've got this one here in the orange Hyper Train. Yep. Uh, what's this one? That is our Elite model. Okay. What's the difference between this, the Genesis and the Elite? So they're both going to have the similar features. They're going to feel the same, except for the Elite is going to have a little bit shorter pre-travel and a little bit longer reset than the Genesis. And I can f feel the shorter pre-travel, and I'm going to try to keep my finger there on the trigger. Yep. And I can feel more of a swing forward as the trigger resets. But it's still going to have that... Cam over toggle. Cam over engine. toggle engine. Cam over to toggle engine with the two springs that really push that hammer forward. Yeah. Uh, another feature, as I was I was uh, getting to know more about your triggers, is all of your triggers have this kind of cool, funky sawback thing going on. Yes. Right. So that has our, our backbone, and that's new for 2018. So we introduced that initially on our, our Enhanced Duty series of triggers, mm -hmm. and we have now integrated that across the board. And what that allows is we'll show here in a little while, um, use of our hyper shoe. So later this year, we're planning to come out with a hyper shoe for the curved triggers as well. So these are notches that the, the shoe's gonna be able to hook into. Yes. Plus it just, it just honestly, it just looks really freaking cool. Yes, exactly, yeah. and that, that was the other point behind it, right. is we want people to be able to look at a rifle and say, no, that is a hyper fire trigger. There you go, there you go, it's a saw back on, on the back. Okay, so we've got the Genesis, the Elite. The Elite, next one down the line is gonna be? The Reflex. The Reflex, okay. So the reflex, again, as far as what your finger is feeling is going to be the same, your traditional curved trigger bow. However, now you're going to get about a 50-50 on that pre-travel and reset. Mm -hmm. So the, the pre-travel is going to be even shorter than the previous two, mm -hmm. but the reset is longer. Okay, and I can feel the, more of a swing on the front there. And they all have the exact same internal cam over toggle engine. Yes, those parts are completely the same across the HyperTouch series. Right, right. I think we've got a question that's come in here. Okay. Um, Yes, we have a question from Kim. Kim wants to know, uh, does this work for, say, AR-10 or 308 style ARs? Yes, it does. Anything that takes a traditional AR style trigger, so whether that be PCCs, AR-10s, AR-15s, mm -hmm. um, they can all use the HyperTouch series or the EDT series of triggers. And it'll drop right in there. Drop right now, in. Now, that was something we were talking about earlier because uh, folks might look at this and say, wow, look at all those extra parts. Yeah. But the installation is not really complicated. In fact, you all have actually no. simplified the installation. Yes. Talk about that a little bit. How, how has that been done? For 2000, uh, 2018, what we did is we condensed some of our toggle system pieces in mm -hmm. here. So mm -hmm. we have taken what used to be two toggle shafts and what we called our toggle spindle right. and con combined that now into our toggle yoke. So this trigger, when being installed, is installed just like a standard mil spec trigger, you install your trigger subassembly. Right. You install your hammer. Right. Now we have the addition of the toggle assembly. So, mm -hmm. drop in the toggle yoke. Mm -hmm. Slide your springs, Put your springs on. Springs on there. Put on your pivot and close it down close into it place. Down. So instead of fiddling with with three extra little pieces, you you made it into just one simple yes. unit, and you cut as you said, you cut a slot in the hammer, so it just drops in there. So it drops in there and just put your springs on and rotate it forward, and you're done. Exactly. Right. So it'd be not very complicated at all to to install one of these. Takes about an extra 30 seconds over a right. standard mill spectrum. Right. Uh, something else I, I, I learned about your products last night. I was, I was looking at your website and I found you actually have a little spring kit specifically for 7.62 by 3.9. Yes, sir. Now, now I got to confess, when it comes to ARs, I'm kind of that guy because <laughs> I, you know, I, I have a couple of rifles I call AR-15 skis because they're in, uh, I've got one in 7.62 by 3.9. 
and I've had some issues with hard primers. The one I have the most trouble with is I've actually got one in 545 by 39, yeah. the little the little small caliber Soviet military round. Yes. And ev all the cheap ammo has rock hard primer. So with that extra strike, would would that be a something useful that I might be able to, to, to fix some of the problems I have. Yes, and that will, so like we said, these ones with the green toggle springs in there are delivering 35% more kinetic energy. That 762 by 39 spring pack is a, mm -hmm. a higher powered hammer spring mm -hmm. and some higher powered toggle springs, which will give you about a three and a half pound pull, but right. it, it, it's reliable enough to ignite even some of the most stubborn bulk ammo from overseas. I'm going to have to check that out because it, it, I've been going, because I got the 7.62 by 39 finally yes. running, but the 545 has been driving me nuts yes. for about three years. So as hard as this hammer hits with the standard spring, the 7.62 by 39 spring pack adds even more even force. More. So it's, you know, you know, your primer may be hard to like a rock if, if you're a Russian military <laughs> surplus, but this, this sucker is going to get it done. It'll take care of it. Cool, cool. All right, so we've had the Genesis. The Elite. The Elite. And the reflex. The reflex. Which one's next? So next we are going to the competition model. The competition model. Okay. Uh, hi. And we've got the little red thing. This is that trigger shoe hyper you're shoe. talking The hyper shoe. And it does kind of clamp on there onto the, the saw back. Yes, it does. Okay. So this is going to act mechanically the same as the reflex trigger. The difference here is you're getting a straight trigger bow and the, at the addition of the hyper shoe. So the hyper shoe has six position adjustment up or down on that trigger bow. Each of these triggers, uh, what we haven't noted yet, is each of these triggers comes with two sets of toggle springs. Okay. So the green set is going to give us a two and a half pound pull. The red set that comes with it will give you a three and a half pound pull. So this trigger, with a six position adjustment for the hyper shoe, actually has 12 different configurations that this trigger can be in. So either the red or the green springs. Yes. And then wh whatever position on the actual trigger bow. Yes. Okay, and would that be the lower you go, the more leverage you get? You're getting more leverage. So um, you know, if I was going to throw um, some numbers out there, when you put the hyper shoe down all the way to the bottom of the trigger bow, mm -hmm. you're actually looking at around a 2.2, 2.3 right. pound trigger pull. All right. the way up to the top, you're looking around 3 pounds. And that is a very nice, wide, easy to find, easy to feel pad. I feel like I have very precise control over that, and I can just press straight back. And I'm not, I'm not left-handed. I'm, I'm firing it left-handed so you all can see it on our Facebook Live. But that's, that's, that's very easy. Uh, speaking of the Live, we do have a question from Brian. And I, I think you already said that, but let's just go ahead and, and, and get this out there again. Is Do these triggers work in, say, a pistol caliber carbine? Yes, they do. They're actually a phenomenal upgrade, which uh, is interesting because it was inadvertent that this happened. Uh, we just happened to be lucky enough that we had come out with a design that worked already. Uh, when people first started... Uh, using PCCs a lot, they became extremely popular. Right, People right. were having a lot of problems with triggers, even the factory triggers that were coming in their PCCs. Uh, and most of that is because with the violent blowback of a PCC, it's throwing the hammer straight down into the disconnector right. and breaking it. Right. So with our cam over toggle engine, this uh, toggle frame here actually, right. the toggle frame right. actually prevents right. the the hammer from hammer slamming, from all slamming the way back. back into the disconnect. And plus you have all the extra resistance of these two springs, yes. which will dampen some of that as well. Because again, and I know it's 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 you're watching on video, but whenever I pull this hammer back, there's quite a bit extra force with the two springs. But the trigger pull is very, very light, very easy, and uh, this is a very interesting trigger. Okay. Uh, got another question, and, and thank you so much for our question to your questions. Again, we are live. Please submit your questions in the comments underneath the video. Uh, <clears throat> Robert wants to know about uh, basically longevity. How long will the trigger system last? Is this the same or longer than mil spec? How durable are these? He wants. It's going to be longer. It's going to be longer, and, and why is that? So we have a proprietary heat treating process that we use um, that no one else out there is using, and that allows our parts to go longer, as well as our proprietary process for our springs. Right. Um, if you take military armorers, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, they usually replace hammer springs uh, from seven to ten thousand rounds, mm -hmm. and we have some springs lasting twenty to thirty thousand. Twenty rounds. to thirty thousand rounds, and then the other thing, as you said, the, the the origin of these this thing, this was the original trigger in that man portable fifty BMG, yes. right? So you've you've got parts that were designed to withstand. I bet fifty BMG. <laughs> you've got a whole other level of forces slapped yes. around there, and it's been scaled down for a five five six or or a three oh eight or yep. nine millimeter in a PCC or whatever. So you're saying with your proprietary heat treatment, 
you said 20,000 rounds? 20 to 30,000 30 rounds 30, before those springs rounds. need to be replaced. That's in, uh, you know, that's, a, that's what we've tested. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, different scenarios could be different. If you're storing it with the hammer cock, and these springs can weaken just like any other springs can. Um, but we do have customers that have their original Genesis triggers, which back then was just called the HyperTouch 24. Right. Uh, we have customers who have been using those since Terry started selling them. And uh, the most I've gotten from them is, hey, can I get a new set of springs a now of springs. four years later? Right, right. And, and a customer who buys one of these triggers, what's the process for getting new springs? All they have to do is uh, hop on our website. On our website, there's contact forms there, and you can just give us a request for the parts needed, and we'll get that taken care of. We see it as a customer service aspect to just provide things like that for our customers. Right, so even if they say brought, bought one of these off the Brownells website at www.brownells.com, <laughs> right, got to get that in there. Even if they bought it from us, they could still get new hammer springs yes. anytime they need it. Very Any, cool. Anything needed, they can just send us an email and we will get it taken care of. Cool. And of course, uh, it would also be covered, I don't know that Brownells would actually have the hammer springs in stock, no. but uh, it, the trigger itself would be covered by our forever guarantee as well. So I mean, you know, you're, you're double covered there. Yeah. You got yeah. hammer springs for life and you know, you, if you need to return it, you can. Yes. And then we have the last one of the hyper touch over here in the, the silver colored hyper train. Which one's this? So this is our Eclipse model. So the Eclipse and the competition are essentially the same, but the Eclipse model has a nickel boron coating for longevity and lubricity. Right, and you can probably kind of see that right there. It is shiny and silver colored, kind of matching the, uh, the Hypertrain. It is slick and smooth. Also the trigger, if you can see that, it's got the black trigger shoe, and you see the nickel boron coating. And so it's just like this one, yes. nickel boron coating. Right. So people uh, tend to get the Eclipse when they have a more high-end or more flashy rifle build mm -hmm. that they want to mm -hmm. use that for, as well as all of our triggers. We don't pre-polish any sear surfaces, mm -hmm. um, and that whole reason is that every single lower receiver is different. Every rifle build is different. So when this trigger gets put into your specific lower receiver, we want it to self-polish and all of those parts to work in together in your specific Just lower receiver. from use. The Eclipse is a little bit different because that nickel boron isn't going to wear through, mm -hmm. so it doesn't need as much of a break in. So, a lot of people will get that for more. Um, we see a lot more PRS guys mm -hmm. wanting to use mm -hmm. the Eclipse mm -hmm. models because they want to get it in their rifle, the rifle that they're not going to go shooting 500 rounds through. Right, right. right they right use away. only for competition. Exactly. They want it all to wear in together uh, to be as precise as possible. Yes. Of course, Precision Rifle Series, and it's one of the, the hottest, newest, yes. most rapidly growing shooting sports out there. Uh, Got another question, and, and thank you so much. We've got a question here that uh, what safety selectors work with your triggers? So what we have found so far is that there are only a few that don't work, and that's due to the way that the flats in the safety selector are cut. So on our triggers, what is not seen across others is we have a small 45-degree cut. Mm -hmm. And safety selectors that have two flats that are cut in a rather steep V shape, mm -hmm. um, when those go get put into safe, uh, the rifle will still fire with use in our triggers. Um, so, so, so if you stick with a, a standard mill spec, standard you're mil probably spec. good to go. Yes, and right. we had there are there are multiple others out there. Um, for instance. Um, I, I know the strike industry strike switch, I've done testing with that. Mm -hmm. We have some guys there that use, uh, guys at Hyperfire that use that in their rifles. Mm -hmm. um, but again, e each scenario is different. Um, you know, right. I've had some of these ones that are not supposed to work and I've had them work in rifles. Right. Um, but we are coming out with our own safety selector later this year. So we'll be able to get, when it, what will that be called, the Hyper Selector? The Hyper Switch. The Hyper Switch, the Hyper Switch. <laughs> so what's timeline on that? We are looking at end of spring, beginning of summer to be fully introducing that to market. So in just a few months, you'll be able to get the hyper switch to go with your hyper touch. Yes. Okay, very cool. And also talking about, you were talking about the, the, the back end here. You, you've got something going on in here that's hard to see because the triggers are installed, but something called a debris pump? Yes. What, what about the debris pump? What's that? So our new debris pump, what we've done is we've actually created an arch in the, bo the back of the trigger itself. Right. And then we've also put some through cuts through the bottom and raised the walls around the disconnector. And what this allows us to do is if you get any type of debris or blown primers in your fire control cavity, mm -hmm. the disconnector actually pumps them out of the bottom of the trigger right. into the back of the cavity. So it just pushes it to the back. So it doesn't hinder operation. So you can just keep on shooting, and then you can dig that out of there or shake it out later exactly. when you're cleaning the rifle. So if a blown primer or any clump of dirt or whatever gets down in there, yes. it will sort of self 
almost self-clean itself. Yes. Right. And, and what would a blown primer potentially cause if, in a regular trigger that didn't have that feature? So essentially, I mean, it, it can cause uh, many different issues. It's, what it's not doing is it's not allowing the disconnector to move freely anymore. So uh, it can cause binding in different areas. Mm -hmm. It can cause failure to resets. Right. Um, it would ca cause your rifle to no longer go bang. Yes. Right. <laughs> Which could be, <laughs> depending on the situation, might be very, very bad. Problem. Exactly. Right. right. But again, this one is, is what's this one called again? The nickel boron? Is the Eclipse. The Eclipse. Right. Again, all these triggers are absolutely fantastic. Uh, to, 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 to feel the trigger pull. All right, now on all the hyper trains, we've got, and I'll just grab this one because it says hyper fire right on there. You can get, you, this, this is your grip, right? Yes, the hyper grip. The hyper grip. And it, you can go with, with the full color logo or all the others have the logo, but, but in, it just plain black, so it's more subdued looking. And when I was looking at these on the, on the website, uh, I thought these would be kind of squishy and grippy, but these are, I'll, I'll grab the comp. A good here. solid polymer. Yeah, very, 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 very solid. And it's got a nice shape to it. And it feels, it doesn't feel like an AR grip. It feels like I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing a nine millimeter polymer pistol of some sort. What, what's going on with this grip here? So the grip is much larger than your standard mil spec uh, or, or a lot of others out there. Um, the other thing that's really big about this is the actual angle at which the grip sits. Right, right. So a typical AR grip is going to sit more forward and cause you to have to cant your wrist over. Um, what this is going to do is this actually um, it was ergonomically designed to align the muscles in your all the way mm -hmm. from your forearm to your trigger finger to allow a better trigger pull, a more uh, accurate trigger pull for the body. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this with my right hand, and I can I can really feel it. I mean, when I picked this up, I wanted to do like this because it, it feels yes. like a pistol. It, it, it's a very ergonomic. It feels very nice. Uh, the, uh, almost a beaver tail there, yes. right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So the, some of the other nice features about it is it is made um, much larger than any other grips out there. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is custom, uh, so it's customizable. So personally for my competition rifles, I trim out some areas around the safety selector. Right. So that I have a little bit more ease of use there and it also allows more of a pocket for my thumb to sit into. Um, we've had guys remove this upper portion because they, they kind of want to put their hand up a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's bigger so that it actually draws your hand back and again, lines up that trigger. Lines up better. and you've got almost perfect trigger finger position where you get the, the middle of the front pad right where it needs to go. We've got some more questions coming in here. Um, Kyle wants to know, what, are, what's, what, what kind of price range do you have for these triggers? I mean, we've been focusing so far on the, uh, the hyper touch. What's, what's someone probably going to retail pay for one of these? Uh, the HyperTouch series runs anywhere from $200 to $275 MSRP. So the Genesis will give you a $200 trigger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Elite and the Reflex, you're looking at about $225. Mm -hmm. uh, the Competition is $250 and the Eclipse is $275. Right, so there's a, a price range on these, on the yes. HyperTouch, and that's probably one of the most changed parts on, on AR-15s out there. Yes. And uh, I used to coach a college air, air rifle team and, and, and I know that Money spent on a good trigger is money well spent. <laughs> exactly. I mean, if, if you really, if triggers don't make your, your gun inherently more accurate, they just make it so much easier. Yes. With, with a little bit of focus and effort to shoot a lot more precisely. It takes the have, mental game out of it. Right. So you and don't you, have to focus. You know on exactly that. when that thing's going to break. You've got perfect control, and it's so much easier to shoot well if you've got a good trigger. Yes. Okay. So we've got this set of triggers, but if someone wanted to say, do a little bit, uh, not spend quite as much. You've got some triggers for that too, yes. right? Okay. Like so we have our one. Enhanced Duty series. Enhanced Duty triggers are also called EDT. EDT. Right. So our EDT line of triggers uh, was introduced, number one, because we deal a lot with uh, military and law enforcement. And mm -hmm. a lot of departments don't want their guys having triggers underneath four, five, six pounds. Right. So the EDT series was introduced to be a more cost-effective um, system with a little bit heavier hammer pull. Um, so what we did is we designed a mil-spec style trigger, but it has cleaned up sear geometry. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're going to get a little bit shorter pull, a little bit shorter reset. It's going to be much cleaner, not feel so gritty, Right. Um, but it is in that lower price range. And, and it's, it's noticeably a heavier pull than the Hyper Touch, but yes. it's very clean. Oh yes. And not much, uh, I don't feel anything <laughs> gritty or, or, or nasty going on there. It's just, it's just 
Yes. Very straightforward. And all the parts look very, very familiar. I mean, this is, like you said, the, the geometry on these is pretty much, in a lot of ways, standard mill spec. But I did notice this one has a kind of a funky shape on the hammer here. What's going on with the hammer? So the hammer on that one is the same shape that you see on the HyperTouch right, series. And right. what that, that, that lighter hammer profile does allows for a faster lock up time. Faster lock time, which is another key component of a good trigger. Yes. Of course, that reduce, the faster the lock, lock time, and you're talking like in milliseconds. Right? Milliseconds, yeah. but it still makes a difference. Right, it still makes a difference because the, the, the less time there is between the time you actually actuate the trigger and the gun goes bang, the less time there is for the gun to come out of alignment or movement or anything. So it's got the, the, the same profile hammer as all these. Yes. But um, still with, with, with the rest of the geometry being more like mil spec. Yes, yeah, so it's a mil, the, the entire design is a mil spec design as your standard curved trigger bow right. with the addition of our backbone, um, typical trigger disconnector hammer. Setup. Right, right. So what would be uh, the price range on this? What's 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 retail on something like this? MSRP on the this is the EDT sharpshooter model, and mm -hmm. uh, MSRP is ninety nine dollars as as with all of the EDT triggers. So less than a hundred bucks. Yes. Right. So you can go like a two hundred dollar trigger over here. Or really improve the uh, the trigger pull on your AR for like a hundred bucks. Yes. Right. Okay. We also have this one over here. What's this one? So this is our EDT heavy gunner, and so what you're going to find is features very similar to the sharpshooter. Mm -hmm. The difference being a larger hammer profile. Right. And you can probably see that sticking up above, because if, if if I pull the trigger on this one, you can probably see the difference. That's got a lot more mass. Yes. Right. And it. it more familiar looking profile, right? So that is a, yes, a mil spec, style, a mil spec um, uh, hammer profile. And that's going to increase the lockup time. Mm -hmm. However, you're going to get more energy. A more, a heavier strike to yes. help with maybe harder primers. Yes. Enhance reliability. Still, you've got, as you said, just like this one, you've got the improved geometry in here where the, fa where the, the surfaces interface. Yes. And slick and smooth, there's no grit. And all of these share the same debris pump that the HyperTouch series. So you still have that added extra feature where it'll push blown primers or any other debris out yes. the back. Right. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. And then in the, the final one in the EDT, the Enhanced Duty Trigger, we've got this one. Now what's going on with this one? So this is our EDT Designated Marksman. So right. with the Designated Marksman, you're going to find the same hammer that you found in the Heavy Gunner, but you're going to find our duplex trigger bow. Right, I'm feeling that with my finger. There's, there's a curved part up here, and then there's a wide, flat part down here at the bottom. And well, what's, I'm sure there's a reason. You said that everything mm -hmm. Hyperfire does, there's a reason. What's, what's the reason for this funky trigger shape? Here? It's really to give a dual purpose trigger for a more mil spec or duty um, defense type situation. So the curved upper portion makes you have to be a little bit more deliberate. You're going to get right. a little bit of a heavier trigger pull, um, and it's just familiar for a lot of people. So that's going to be more of your close quarters type engagements. Right. Whereas um, the flat portion towards the bottom gives you not only a um, a spot for your for your memory for your finger right. to go to each time, but it gives you a little bit more leverage if you need to get down for a more long range shot. So right. it's really dual purpose. Right. So if you need to be precise, and I could feel that. So if if for for more of a, a close encounter where you need, especially in a law enforcement situation, yes. you need to be very sure of your target. Yes. Right. <laughs> and very deliberate uh, choice to fire. But for a more precise one, the finger and it's very simple. You just slide down here. And it's a little bit wider and it's flat. Yes. And that feels pretty good. Oh yeah, that feels pretty good. We've got another question, and again, as a reminder, we are live, so please send us your questions. We'd love to try to answer your questions. We've got a question from Eric. Do you make the EDT trigger with a flat trigger? Uh, we do not yet. Not yet. Um, you know, what, what a lot of customers don't know is all of the behind the scenes things that we have going on, so I can tell you that um, we've had, we've mulled around that idea, but uh, we do not know for sure if we're going to do that or not yet. But the idea is being kicked around and, and you've heard folks asking for that. Yes, we have, okay. heard, we have heard people asking, many people have asked that question. As of right now, we do not offer an EDT with a flat trigger bow. The designated marksman is what you're going right. to get closest to right. with that. And, and it's like the last third or so of the, of the trigger is nice and flat, just right there, like that. But stay tuned, who knows what's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, other things you've got going on, you've got your grips, you've got your hyper train, and again, the hyper train, you can, you can buy, you can get just the fixture, right? Yes. 
It does not come with a grip. It does not. So you can put whatever grip you want on there. Yeah. So if, if, you've, if you want to practice with, say, a different grip that you wanted to use, you, it does not come with the hyper uh, grip. Of course, obviously, you've got the hyper grip installed. But that's just really neat. I mean, if I had one of these, I would just sit around the office doing work and just practice on my trigger technique. I tell you, it's an amazing right. training tool. I mean, all of us at Hyperfire shoot three gun right. USPSA, right. Um, and it's it's just amazing to be able to sit and most of the time you don't even realize you you're doing it. You're doing it. You're, you're really programming that <laughs> in there, and you're can really really refine and enhance your technique. But you, in addition to all these, you also have some muzzle devices. Yes. So we have our hypercomp compensators. Okay, and I want to kind of turn these sideways. A little bit so you can kind of see through like the shark gill cuts or whatever what do you call those so this is our uh, vectored exhaust system vectored so exhaust system you have progressive okay. porting so you can mm -hmm. see that it goes from smaller ports towards the bottom right. up to larger ports towards right. the top near the muzzle small bigger 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 and that just deals with the way that the gases interact as they're coming out of the barrel right um, what you can't see on camera as well is that those ports are all fanned out. So from the back, they're facing backwards all the way up to the front where they're facing forward. Um, with compensators, muzzle devices, um, there's really many different aspects that people try to hit. So the military mm -hmm. is looking more for sonic dispersion, uh, flash suppression, whereas somebody in the competition realm might be looking a lot more towards recoil compensation. Right, for that quick follow-up shot on the steel target exactly. or the paper target, especially in a three-gun situation. Um, We've got a quick question about the triggers. I, I, I want to go ahead and, and get that in there before yeah. we continue with the, with the compensators. A question from Terry. He wants to know, uh, can he get these in combo sets, trigger group plus one of your grips? Yes, of course. I mean, any, anybody can purchase those. Um, we do not have any type of um, package deals no package as it deals is yet, right now. Right. Um, but again, that's something that we can definitely toy around with the idea, and we do. So, so if somebody wanted, to, for example, just the grip, what's what's going to be MSRP on the grip? Uh, the grips, there's a different range. So you have the standard hyper grip, mm -hmm. which is going to give you, uh, it was $25 MSRP. You move then to the hyper grip with logo, mm -hmm. so that's our hyper grip L, mm -hmm. and that's going to run you $30. Right. You go to the hyper grip T, which is textured, and oh, that's going to be $35. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not quite like sandpaper, but it's it's noticeably rougher. And you can probably, that's why this one looks gray, is because the, the surface is all roughed up. But that, uh, that feels good. Yeah, that's, it's, on sometimes on, especially on, on some of the modern polymer pistols, you pick it up, holy cats, it's sandpaper. But yep. this, this is textured, but not so textured that it's painful. This, yes. this feels good. So what's, what's price on this one approximately? $35. 35 bucks. And, and then, then you, you can go get the with the logo as well. Yes, yeah, so that's the Hypergrip TL, so it's textured with colored uh -huh. logo, and that one runs $45. 45 bucks, right. So you've got a, and did you say that, that you're coming out with some kind of rubberized ones? Yes, we're working uh, right now with figuring out how to get these rubberized. Um, but again, the, re the main reason for them being polymer is so that you have the adjustability. So if you, or the ability to cut them right. through your hand, if you right. do the rubberized coating, not so much and you anymore. use a file or a Dremel tool or whatever just to remove a little material wherever you need it to and then sand it back down and it would be just fine. But yeah, these are very, very solid uh, and they're very, very nicely shaped. Uh, any other questions? And again, please, please, we're live, please send us your questions. But we've got the grips, the triggers, the hyper train, and as you were saying, on your comps, your hyper comps, these are actually the ports change shape. Yes. and even orientation as they go from the, the muzzle of the barrel to the, I guess this would yeah. be the muzzle of the compensator. Yep. Right? Okay. So as of right now, there is no definitive testing for compensators. So mm -hmm. what we wanted to do was um, really just, just kind of pit ours up against uh, some of the others on the market um, and really just see where we stand up. And so as I said, there's you know flash suppression, sonic dispersion, recoil compensation. Mm -hmm. We wanted to kind of touch on all of those areas. Uh, so this compensator it does very well at keeping a nice, flat, smooth recoil plane, mm -hmm. uh, reducing some of that felt recoil to the mm -hmm. shooter, um, as well as sonic dispersion and flash suppression. So it's really just a well-rounded um, really top line compensator. I've been using them since before ever even starting at Hyperfire and I really, really like them. They do make a huge difference. 
Right, right. And, and, and Mark asks, do you have a recommenda recommendation for a pistol caliber carbine or a PCC? I'm, I'm going to assume he's talking about a comp here. Uh, Mark, if, if you're not talking about a comp, please, please uh, message in and let us know. But I'm assuming you're asking about the comp. And in fact, this one right here, I don't know if you can see the... Uh, the, the opening on the muzzle on camera, but that, that this is specifically for 9mm. Yes, so that is our HyperComp 9mm, and that's distinguishable from the others by the fact that the, the tip of it is just flat. It's just flat, as opposed to one side up or this kind of crenellated thing going on. And the other thing that, that, um, that I found interesting it was, was the thread pitch on this one. It's half by 28. It's half by 28, because I've, I've built an AR-15 pistol 9mm. Again, I'm that guy, you know, I've got... ARs and like 11 calibers. I'm going to build a few more. I'm, I can stop anytime I want. You can I never want, have really. too many. I, I can stop you never anytime have too I many. want. Uh, but uh, the muzzle device I put on my 9mm AR pistol, had a, I had to get a freaky thread pitch because the thread pitch on the barrel was freaky. But this yep. is a very common, very standard yes. half by 28. And it seems like more and more manufacturers are going to that because it's exactly. so universal. It uh, looks like uh, we had another question. Uh, trigger suggestion as well for a PCC, for a pistol caliber carbine for a Mark. So any of the HyperTouch series triggers are going to work very well in PCC platforms to include uh, the MPX, um, other platforms that people have had a lot of questions on. And as we, as we had talked about before, uh, a big reason for that is mm -hmm. the toggle frame right. in the cam over toggle engine right. is protecting the hammer from slamming all the way back into the disconnector. That so big blowback bolt. Exactly. Right. So not any single one of the HyperTouch series is better or worse for PCC. Um, again, with the pre-travel and reset and the type of trigger bow that you have, it's all dependent on the specific shooter. Right, right. And, and, but just the inherent in the design structures you're saying, you've got more reinforced area here it's going to protect against that big bolt slapping back yes. under blowback. Right. So any of the HyperTouch for a pistol caliber carbine. I will tell you the most popular one is mm -hmm. the HyperTouch competition. That is by far the top seller. It's used across the board in competitions, whether it be three gun and two to three rifles, you know, PCC rifles for USPSA. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just a well-rounded trigger. People like it. Okay. So you and for also for your PCC, you've got your nine millimeter hyper comp. And then you also have, currently, you have the others are just in 5.56, right? Yes. No 308s yet. No 308s yet. Um, again, we've, we've, uh, we've got some of that stuff in development. I can't exactly say when right. those are going to be released. Right. Um, but we have, we, have, we have heard many of our customers asking when we are going to do uh, larger calibers. Um, and, and we are working say 300 on. blackout, but the 30 would still work. Yes. Yeah. Uh, with these particular muzzle devices, it's, it's interesting you have the different shapes on the ends. What, what's going on? What are these called? So really it's design, it's just a, a design a feature? aesthetic appearance. Okay. So the 556C five, five, or 556C five, five, competition mm -hmm. um, is what you're going to see on a lot more uh, competitive uh, shooters want to use that. Uh, whereas you have the 556CQ, five, five, which stands for close quarters. As mm -hmm. you can see, it's the crowned end, right. and it looks more like your breacher style. Right, so it's going to give you a little bit of standoff, yes. right? And uh, it's kind of scary looking, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, but these have essentially the exact same type of ports cut yes. in them. They're go both going to be half by 28 threads, yes. right? And, and what's, the, uh, what's the MSRP on your uh, muzzle devices here? 129 $129 for... Any, Any of the three. Okay, cool, cool. All right, again, please ask us some questions. Uh, we've got our Facebook Live event going here. We are live here at the Brownell Studios. And checking over here, we've got a question uh, for Jess. He says, what do you recommend for a SIG AR-10 or 308 style trigger? <laughs> uh, that's a, that's a, it's an interesting question. Um, again, any of these triggers are going to work in anything that takes a standard AR style trigger. Right. So it is really dependent on the customer and how they shoot their rifle. Right. Um, but we've seen a lot of people that do shoot 308s um, wanting things like the Elite or the Reflex. Um, we've found, at least personally dealing with customer service, I've mm -hmm. found that a lot mm -hmm. of customers who are shooting the 308s um, tend to be a little bit more traditional in what they want to see and feel in a trigger, so they like the curved trigger bow. Right, right. And but and you can set up a 308 to do so many different things. I mean, yes. there's there's folks who might be shooting uh, heavy metal division and three yes. gun, or the guy who's got like the 24 or 26 inch barrel who wants to reach way, way out there. Yes. And again, the usage of the gun 
would go a long way to determine which one of these would work the best. Exactly, but any of, any of these triggers, even the EDT series, mm -hmm. work very well in AR10 308 platforms. Right. right. <coughs> Pardon me, excuse me, sir. <coughs> Again, we're live. Please ask us questions of how long have you been with the company? Myself, personally, I've been there since September of this last year. Uh, we worked very closely with Hyperfire prior to that. I've been mm -hmm. using the product since long mm -hmm. before that. Mm -hmm. And just due to uh, my background, um, Terry, uh, the owner, and Brian, who's the director of sales and marketing, wanted mm -hmm. to pull me on there to help cool. out with product development. Cool. And in your time with the company, I'm sure you, you, like you said, you shoot three gun. Which one of these do you like? for whatever purposes in your rifles. Last year I was shooting the Eclipse trigger. Okay. Um, one That's of the, this one, right? yes, okay. one of the things I didn't note uh, earlier is that that um, hyper shoe really just spreads out mm -hmm. the pull weight over the pad of your finger over a wider area. So right. it actually gives you a lighter perceived trigger pull right. weight. But the biggest thing for me is that it gives me an exact reset point for my finger. So if I pull my finger off of that trigger for any reason, I know exactly where it's going back to. My shots are 100% consistent Completely every single time. Right. So last year I was using the Eclipse and this year I've switched over to the competition, not for any other this reason other than- This is the competition, right? Yep. Okay. And for any other reason than? Just the fact that it was the, happened to be the first one that I grabbed. I enjoy the flat trigger bow. Right. Um, we've had a lot of customers who said they are more traditional. They like the curved trigger yep. bow, but there's just something about that flat trigger and that hyper shoe that once people start shooting it, they get about the first hundred rounds through it, and they say, you know what, I'm never going back to a right. curved trigger. Right, right. Because it's interesting. You've got the the straight trigger, but the trigger shoe or the trigger is it, the, hyper, the shoe. hyper shoe is actually got a little bit of curve to it. Yep. So it's got like the best of both worlds. It's sort of a pocket for your finger right. to sit in. Right, right. So you still get the, the the leverage of a straight trigger, but you still have a little curved surface for your finger to fit in there. Yeah, exactly. That feels very, very good. So we've got some other questions uh, coming in here. Uh, well, actually, I think we're about out of time. Uh, ben, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it, it's very, very interesting. I'm going to have to get one of these and put it in my uh, my uh, 545 AR. Of I course. Bet, I bet it'll, I will never have a hard primer issue ever again. Uh, these also, they, they feel awesome. They look great. Uh, only been around for five years, yep. almost. Be sure and check them out. You can see all the uh, Hyperfire triggers at www.brownells.com. Uh, thank you so much for watching today, and uh, we'll see you next time.